Hello everyone um, and welcome to this second video of this series about quantum mechanics. Today we are going to discuss the necessity for a quantum theory. In the previous video we have introduced the main tenets of classical mechanics and now it's going to be um, clear why classical mechanics cannot explain every single phenomenon that we observe in reality and the necessity actually for a, a theory beyond classical mechanics which we call nowadays quantum theory. So the very first evidence of a necessity for a theory beyond classical mechanics uh, came from the experiment called nowadays as uh, black body radiation. A black body is essentially a body, it's an idealization of a body that absorbs all incident electromagnetic radiation. And physics tell us that whatever radiation is absorbed, eventually this radiation has to be emitted. And this um, um, emission has to be in thermal equilibrium with, uh, with its environment. So what um, scientists, what experimental physicists have observed in this particular context is the distribution of radiation that one would get uh, depending on the frequency uh, that uh, has been absorbed by the black body, but also on the temperature um, of the environment where the black body is. And if one uses classical mechanics to predict what kind of distribution of these radiations one should observe experimentally, uh, one gets actually a prediction that is completely wrong, especially for wavelength that becomes extremely small and close to the ultraviolet uh, regime. So uh, at the beginning of, uh, of, um, of the century, Planck actually introduced an hypothesis which is the following. The hypothesis is that radiation can change its energy only in minimal increments that is proportional to the frequency of its associated electromagnetic wave. So in other words, if you are radiating a black body um, with the radiation, this, uh, the frequency of the radiation is going to practically tell what is going to be the behavior of the black body but also we have to introduce the idea or the, the, the novel concept that energy is now uh, energy is not um, absorbed or emitted as a continuous variable but rather it's a, emitted in terms of small increments that uh, Planck used to call quanta and from that actually we got the name of quantum mechanics. So this very first experiment was very puzzling for the physicists of the 20th century because essentially it would be very very difficult to explain why we observe what we observe by using only classical theories. Then a second experiment appeared that was even more puzzling and this is the photoelectric effect. Um, the photoelectric effect is actually simple to explain. If you have a material and you hit this material with an electromagnetic field, electrons are going to be emitted from this material. So electromagnetic fields are injected and electrons are emitted out of the material. The experiments um, in this case completely disagree with classical physics which is based on the idea that the continuous light waves is transferred um, transfer energy to the electrons but this is not what we observe experimentally. Uh, experimentally speaking what we observe is very 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 different. So Einstein introduced at that time the, the following hypothesis which is that the energy of photons is proportional to the frequency of light and electrons absorb photonic energy until it is likely to be ejected but this energy is absorbed practically in quanta once again. So Einstein actually used the hypothesis of quanta of energies that was introduced by Planck to describe a second um, or to predict let's say the behavior of a second experiment that was not possible to explain uh, otherwise or that was not possible to explain based on classical theories. So 
once again another experiment where the the measurements cannot be explained by means of classical mechanics then another very puzzling um, experiment that appeared was called was the double slit experiment which essentially demonstrated that electrons can behave both as particles and waves to make a long story short you imagine that essentially you have uh, you have, let's say, uh, you see here the mouse, uh, you have a source of electrons that, uh, is emit that are emitted towards a screen that you find here where these two sc the, the screen has two slit through which electrons can pass through. And if you have a last screen at the end beyond the, double, uh, the, the two slit uh, screen, essentially you should observe the electrons going on the second um, on the second screen from classical mechanics the pattern one should obtain on the second screen should be represented by two spots where essentially the electrons goes from one slit or through the other slit and uh, eventually they get to the second screen and what you should observe is just spots of electrons that pass through one or the other slit but in practice what is observed is extremely different and very surprising and practically is what you see on the left hand side here you see here um, practically uh, columns of electrons uh, and, and in a way interf interference patterns that are being pro 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 uh, produced. Um, there is no way to use classical mechanics to explain these experimental measurements and actually the only way to go beyond this impasse and to, to actually be able to explain the experiment is by introducing drastically different ideas if compared to classical mechanics. Um, finally, um, the Heisenberg uncertainty principle started to appear uh, that is another puzzling, um, puzzling uh, observation, experimental observation um, that would be very difficult to explain in terms of classical mechanics. Essentially, it was realized that the precision with which one could measure the position or the momentum of a particle, um, these two precisions are actually um, inversely, inversely proportional inversely proportional which means that in practice if you know the position of a particle you cannot know the momentum of the particle and vice versa this is a situation that is completely inexistent in classical mechanics and there is no way to use classical mechanics to explain such a situation so because of all these experimental facts that were observed Eventually, physicists started to realize that classical mechanics was not the, let's say, the final answer to explanation of the reality. They realized that a, a, a better theory was needed that would go beyond what uh, they had at the time. And that better theory uh, was developed uh, in, in a few decades and eventually became, became what we now call quantum mechanics. As a matter of fact, I am showing here one of the most important equations of quantum mechanics, which is the Schrodinger equation. And as you can see, this is very, very different from the equations of motions of classical mechanics we are used to. Uh, so in the next, in the next uh, video, we will start to introduce these main tenets of quantum mechanics and what the, the mathematical framework of quantum mechanics is. So I thank you very much for your attention and see you in the next video.